of stage four of the Central European Rally. We have a battle, don't we, going on in WRC2. Don't forget Andreas Mikkelsen fighting for the title. It's been a disaster. Something has gone wrong here with the rear of the car early on in the stage. He's lost a lot of time in the stage. Damage suspension. Let's have a little look around while they work away on the car. Uh, don't forget there is no service today. So here is the thing. They will be carrying potentially extra parts and maybe extra tools as well. So in some ways, that is a bit of a saviour for Mickelson and Torstein Eriksson. The battle is between Mickelson, between Gus Greensmith, Johan Rossell. Rossell was out on stage three. This is all playing into Gus Greensmith's hands. But let's watch. It's all quite in control. Do you know what? These situations require experience. They require confidence. And Mickelson knows this car. He knows what he's doing here. He knows his way around a rally car. He knows his way around this car as well. So uh, if there was anyone that was going to be capable of repairing this damaged roadside, it is going to be Andreas Mickelson and Torstein Eriksson. They're a great team. They work incredibly well together. Uh, let's just see if we can get a closer look at what they're working on there. The interesting thing is there's not a lot of oil there, so potentially it's an arm that they've bent or something like that, it's an arm, broken or bent? Broken, we think, an arm, a steering arm. So that's one of those parts that they would probably be carrying, a spare one. I'm assuming they are probably carrying a spare one, otherwise they wouldn't be working away on it. Um, there we go, that's really, really important. Where did we see that in Greece with Ogier? Remember when the jacks failed? Um, and the, uh, it was the handbrake, wasn't it? As the handbrake cools down, the car rolled off the jacks and he didn't have the wheel underneath. Uh, that wheel underneath, really important. Look at this damage to the front as well. He has lost that front uh, bumper and splitter off of there. Again, don't forget, you know, it's 121 kilometres the loop today. 60 kilometres, uh, 121 kilometres, apologies for this day. 60 kilometres in the loop. So uh, he's got to get this repaired, final stage in the loop, and then do it all again this afternoon. He'll be compromised massively for performance with the way this car is. But, most important thing, with cars dropping out, with Rossell dropping out, and others dropping out, the most important thing is he gets going again. Let's see how he's getting on. Bit of discussion going on. Ericsson in the boot. Mickelson, the rear left. Let's get in and have a little look there. Try and keep out of the way of our friends and colleagues from WRC Television will keep out of their way. But we'll have a little look there. Uh, let's have a look. What is that? Yeah, there's the broken parts. That is well and truly broken. Goodness me. Broken wishbone, is it? Yeah. And this part here, the silver part? What is that? Let's have a look. Yeah, a damper canister, maybe, maybe, maybe. But look at that, completely snapped in two. You see that, Elliot? He picked that up. Um, he's hit something. He's clearly hit something very, very hard indeed. It's interesting there are no further cars coming through. It's been quite some time since we had a car through here. Right, okay. Yeah, so there's a big gap, basically, in the opening stage. The opening stage of the morning was stopped because of the Russell incident. And... Uh, there's a big gap because of that. Thank you for that. That's information from, again, our friends and colleagues at WRC Television. Let's just get low down here, Elliot, and just see what's going on underneath the car. As I say, there's this, this always astonishes me, and it, and it astonished me from really the first rally I attended 20 years ago. Just, you know, it doesn't help to panic. It doesn't help to get frantic. You've got to keep control. You've got to keep a method. Uh, and, you know, by being a little bit frantic, a little bit um, out of control, you're just, all you're going to do is make mistakes. It's all about process and getting these things done, using the tools you have available. They're not the ideal tools, they're not the perfect tools, but you, uh, you know, you basically just have to use what you've got and make them work. And you can see that with Mikkelsen there. What's he got in there? Trying to fit that arm, that new arm on. Norm normally, they maybe wouldn't be carrying that part, but they are today because there is no no service. It's 121 kilometres with no service. That part.
what is going on. Now you've got to hope that nothing else is bent. You know, if you're trying to attach it maybe to a slightly damaged, if the bolts are damaged, bent, then mm, all gets rather tricky. But it does look as if he's doing okay there. Physically, it's hard work. It's really hard work physically. Oh, there. Is that going in? Let's see if that's going in. Come round this way. There we That's the difficult part. So attaching it to the rear of the hub. If everything's straight, if everything's in line, it will attach. Everything will go in. It's slightly bent. That's gone in. That's gone in. That's good news. Really good news. Don't forget, much as, as we'd like to offer our, our physical help, we're not allowed to. They have to do it themselves. Can't take any outside assistance at all. Hear the physical exertions. He's a big lad, strong lad, fit lad, but it's still a lot of work. Now, hopefully, we'll get the chance to grab a quick word with Torstein or with Andreas. It might be a little tricky because they're already behind time. We've got. About 50 k's, 60 k's, I think, to the start of the next stage. That also helps. Long road sections, a little bit more time. It's a long stage, long road section. They've got a little bit of time in hand. There we go. That's fantastic. Tools are going back in. behind because who knows what might happen during the course of the rest of the day. They've only done 30 kilometers out of those 120, so still still 90 kilometers to do today. There we are, there we are. Let's have a look at this as well, Elliot. Look, the wheel that came off still full, full of mud and rubbish there, the rim. That's an enormously impressive effort from these two, though. It really is. Just securing these parts. So, with the, you know, everything well secured. Well secured within this car. And there's somewhere for all these parts. You, know, you can take as many or as few spare parts as you want, really. Uh, but you have to have somewhere to secure them. They have to all be fitted within the car and safe and secure. Here we go, let's just see if we can get a quick word. I'm not sure we're going to, but no, I don't think we are. There we are. Mickelson, let's just see how that car goes as well. We'll watch it up the hill and see how straight it is. So he went off the road, we understand, and hit some trees. There we go. Mickelson heading towards stage five. That Doesn't sound great, doesn't sound great, looks reasonably straight, and that might just be because part of the, the exhaust system is slightly damaged. That's maybe why it didn't sound so great though. But that is good news for Mickelson and Ericsson. They are on their way again. They do appear to have well, completely replaced that broken arm. Is there any other damage to the car? Mm, we'll have to wait and see, but you know, that's a disaster. By no, you, there's no other way to say it, but that is a disaster for the two of them. But, you know, they do have a chance now. They're back on the road. They're heading towards stage five. Mm -hmm.